All right, guys. It looks like we have some viewers now. Um, welcome to the Small Time Tournament. I am Nacho Cheese. I am a first-time caster, uh, long-time StarCraft fan, <clears throat> and I'm going to be casting a uh, first-round game between two opponents, Pi Greg and Miko. And uh, let me just tell them that we are all ready. All right, and we're going to get started. The first map is on Zelnaga Caverns. Um, and remembering that uh, this tournament is doing first round uh, and second round, or I'm sorry, just the first round is going to be a single elimination game. So the winner of this game will be advancing, and the loser uh, will be watching the streams and supporting us, I'm sure. So we have Pygreg is the green zerg. Um, now, I've played against Pygreg before, actually. He's a top gold player, and he's a strong opponent. He'll be spawning down here in the bottom left. And uh, up here in the top right, we will have Miko. I just saw Miko play a practice game against Lane, and he is in Platinum League. Um, a very strong Terran opponent. And uh, the practice game he actually played was a Terran Berserk. So we should be seeing uh, a bit of a mirror of his build from that warm-up match. Um, I'm sure he'll be glad that he's warmed up from that. Now, as I said, this is part of the small time tournament. Uh, this is a new tournament that's starting um, uh, StarCraft username Zen, and on Reddit, uh, RabbitBot has organized this tournament. Um, it's just a small, friendly tournament. You know, got a couple people online to sign up and participate in this tournament. It's just for fun. There are no prizes yet, but we hopefully are going to be doing this uh, once a week, every week, um, having a lot of fun, getting a lot of experience casting and playing, and who knows where this could go. Uh, so we are seeing a very standard opening for both players. Uh, no extractor tricks or anything for Pygreg. Uh, it doesn't look like any super early aggression. We're seeing a scouting SUV go out, traverse the plains of the Zelnaga Caverns, um, passing by the Rift to Hell over here. Um, and he's just, this is a bit early for a scout. Um, he's not really going to see too much information other than this early expansion, which he is in perfect position to lay, but just is not microing that SCV. And so this drone will be able to lay down this hatchery as soon as possible. Now, I don't know what Hydreg is doing, uh, where his focus is, um, but that hatchery was very delayed. He had 300 minerals for quite some time before throwing that down. Uh, so that is a little late. And you're seeing a second barracks go down for Miko. Now, this isn't necessarily in a cheesing position, um, but it is a two racks build. So this two racks has been used by a lot of professional players, um, and I guess is being used by some amateur players as well, uh, to some degree of success. Uh, and then they was able to use it to do some serious damage to Idra in MLG Columbus. I don't know how many of you guys watched that. Uh, I was watching that. That was incredible. It was very exciting. Uh, and so we're seeing the SCV return down here to continue doing some scouting. He is going to see this expansion, um, but he is not moving anywhere else. Uh, I don't know if these drones are going to be going down here. Oh, he's dropping a bunker. So he is going to try and do some sort of aggressive two racks play. However, these drones are taking down this SCV, and he is not going to be very happy about that. This first Marine is coming down here going to try and do some damage, but these drones should be able to clean it up. Well, we've got two Zerglings and a Queen coming in, and that should be more than enough to finish off this bunker um, and any support that he's got coming down. You know, he's only getting Marines one at a time right now. He's not taking them up to get two at a time. He's not actually building any. Now he's trying to sink them up. Um, but this bunker is not finished, so this Marine is very, very exposed uh, to being attacked, and there go the Zerglings, and they get a nice little surround, the spine crawler going down, and that is going to end the two racks pressure for Miko. Miko is going to respond by throwing down his own expansion, which is somewhat reasonable. Uh, these four Zerglings are not really enough to do a whole lot of pressure, especially if he gets these two Marines out in time. Um, they can kite those Zerglings to their heart's content uh, with some proper micro. And so we're probably just going to see you know, can fall back into some regular play. Uh, the Sturax did not leave him terribly open, uh, but going out all the way down here and building this factory may leave him open. These three Zerglings able to just 
run in here, no problem. They're not doing any damage. They could go in here and snipe this SCV. Uh, they could run into the base and do some scouting to see if anything else is going on. But really, he's seeing all he needs to see with this factory going down with these two barracks being lifted uh, and another supply depot. Uh, he's going to take out, looks like, one of these Marines. This other Marine is trying to run away. He is just not going to be able to make it. He's going to get taken out. These two Zerglings are going to run into the base. Now, if they try and attack workers, they're just going to get destroyed. But Hydreig wisely leads them away and just puts them on a scouting path. These two Marines are probably going to be able to come up here and just clean this up. And uh, we see 12 Zerglings now on the way for Hydreig in the south. Uh, I was about to say he's droning up hard, getting his economy going, but I guess he just turns that right around on me. And let's take a look at the units that he has 32 drones to 19 SCVs, so I'm sure he is feeling quite ahead in that regard. Um, Miko must have lost a lot of time focusing on that two racks early pressure. He's got a lot of SCVs on gas, so he's not necessarily getting all the minerals. Look at that, he's got 260 gas that he is not really using right now. Uh, nothing in production from this factory except for siege tech, which, uh, as you may guess, will not be very good without any siege tanks. We're seeing these Zerglings just follow these SCVs, um, making sure nothing, nothing funky is going on, no hidden expansions, no hidden tech along the side, uh, and they're going to be able to clean anything up. And he's hiding these Zerglings here. This is, a, this is a little too many Zerglings, I think. You really only need one just to spot this expansion. Those other five uh, could be up at the front, just trying to pick off any other scouting SCVs or anything like that. What I do like is that he's got one Zergling here on the tower. Uh, I wish he had another one on the tower over here, but that is okay. He's getting all the vision he needs. He will not be surprised um, by anything moving out here. As you can see, he's got this whole arc scouted. Um, poking in back here, I don't, know, I don't know if I like this bunker placement. Um, that's a bit far away, and as you can see, Pyrig is just able to run right by him, do a little bit of damage to the workers, not too much though, since these Marines were in good position, and now we have a tank out on the field. Um, so this tank is probably going to siege up, probably going to delay or stop any aggression. Pyrig understands this, he's throwing down another expansion. Now these rocks are still up, which means this will be a little vulnerable to attack, but... Miko, our Terran, is just not scouting. He's not sending anything out. I don't believe Miko has any knowledge that this has gone down. He doesn't know any of the tech structures. All he knows is this expansion from when he saw it during his early aggression. Uh, Miko really needs to step up his game in that regard. He needs to send out some scouts or do some scans or something. And now we see five barracks going down for Miko. I don't know what response he's seeing. Maybe he's thinking that his opponent is still only on circling tech. Which is true. Uh, Pycrack only has Zerglings. He does not have a Roach Martin. He's just now morphing in his lair. He does have a Baneling Nest, but no Banelings out on the field as of yet. Um, those Banelings are not going to do very well against two tanks sieged up. Now Miko gearing up to take his own third, going to be taking out these rocks. And unfortunately, Pycrack took away the Zerglings that were spotting here, so he is not going to be able to see this. Hi, Greg is uh, aware of the weakness that I talked about earlier. He is going to be taking out these rocks that will allow him a quicker passage. And what he needs to do is uh, lay down some creep tumors here. This queen has plenty of energy to be able to do that. Lay down some creep tumors, connect these two bases with creep, and then he will basically just be able to run, you know, speed links from this corner all the way over here to defend all the way over here in just a matter of a few seconds. We are getting an overseer over here. Probably just going to fly this over. Uh, to do some scouting, see what tech he's on. I have seen Zerg use their overseers to just contaminate and goop up some buildings, and that can be incredibly annoying, um, especially when, you know, your big tech units like siege tanks or banshees or even battle cruisers are almost done, and then he just contaminates and he delays it another 15 or 30 seconds. So we are seeing this game evolve into a bit of a turtle fest. Uh, Still seeing just on Ling Bane Ling tech for Pygre. Now he has two evolution chambers down. He can be getting double upgrades. He is researching his plus one armor. He already has his plus one melee attacks finished. Uh, and I just don't know 
if Miko has any upgrades. It does not look like he has any upgrades for his infantry. Um, it looks like he doesn't even have an engineering bay. There's nothing for a sea snakes either, no armories. And uh, if he's not careful, Hydra, even though he's going on limited tech, is just going to out-upgrade him. Those Zerglings can get a quick surround on these siege tanks, take them out, those Banelings, if Micro properly, can take out all these Marines. And uh, this could be bad news for Miko, but he does have the starboard down. Um, he's obviously had this factory for a while, so he is on much higher tech. Um, so it's going to come down to some interesting Micro. Now we see a Spire and an Infestation Kit. I must have missed this. Why didn't you guys tell me about this? Uh, so Spire, an Infestation Kit, and a Mutalist coming out. Hydra is now transitioning out of this. And why not? Look at this money. It is skyrocketing. He really needs to focus on building a lot more units. Uh, let's take a look. He's got 67 drones, so he could do with a little more drone count. Um, but honestly, this is just inexcusable. Now there goes down all the gas, because he's building nine mutalists. And this is exactly what he needs to do. Lane of Baneling mutalists can be just so powerful. If you occupy the tanks... Um, and the Marines with your Zerglings. You send the Mutas in behind to take out the tanks, and then you send in the Banelings to take out the Marines, and it is GG for the Terran opponent. Hydric now taking his fourth base at the high yield expansion. This is normally a very risky move, but why not? Terran has not moved out. Terran is playing a two base turtle fest. He took down these rocks and is not doing anything with this third base. Uh, Terran. I have to say, it's not looking very good. It's about 20 food behind in supply. Uh, I'm just not sure what he can do. Now, Pygreg is sending these uh, mutilists over to the side. He's going to try and sneak them by, but Miko, this Viking, fortunately, up there, ready to scout that, and Miko sees that and wisely pulls his Marines back. Now, his Marines don't have stim, so they will not be able to chase after these mutilists. Uh, it looks like he was researching Stim there, but that tech lab goes down, so Stim will be delayed that much more, and those viewers are just going to scoot on out of there, satisfied with that damage. So they're just going to sit here, a little bit out of range from these Marines. Uh, Miko's got to be upset. Miko's got to be very upset now. And we see um, more upgrades going down. Zerg fire attacks going down. 40 Banelings warping in or mut mutating. Um, that is just incredible. Uh, those Banelings, especially since they have their speed upgrade, are just going to be able to roll over those Marines. Now, there are a lot of Marines, and with proper micro, this amount of Marines can take out that amount of Banelings. But remember that this is a gold-platinum-level tournament. I just don't know if we're going to have, or if Nico's going to have the micro it takes to be able to split those Marines and take out those Banelings. So we do see Nico is moving up for an offensive push, uh... Pygreg, again, having the Zerglings at the tower, and sees this is happening, and he's going for an interesting tactic. He's going for a surround, but all these Zerglings are getting just absolutely destroyed, and now these Banelings don't even have a chance to attack. The Banelings coming in from the side do do some damage, and now these Mutalists come in. They're going to do a lot of damage against the tanks, but these Marines, no damage was taken against them, uh, and those Marines are just going to be able to scare off those Mutalists, and this uh, aggressive fourth expansion is going to go down, and now we see 84 Zerglings coming in for Pygreg. That's pretty much the only response he can have in time. But will it be enough? There's only one tank left, so these, Mar these Zerglings should be able to get a good surround. And here they go. They get a nice surround. Those Marines are just going down so fast. And Pygreg will be able to clean this up. I don't think he has enough for a counter push. I think Pygreg agrees. He's keeping those Zerglings right where they are. He's sending these Mutalists up to see what sort of a counter push he can do. Sort of a counter harass. But Miko has a good amount of turrets set up here. A uh, good amount of turrets at his main. He has some Vikings chilling out around here. I'm not sure where they have gone. Um, I'm not even sure if he still has them. Yep, still looks like he has four Vikings hiding somewhere around his base. I just do not see them. Uh, there they are, flying, flying towards the main. Uh, so he is more than amply defended against all this mutilist caress. And we got to see what Pygreg is doing. Pygreg has to feel a little bit on the defensive, even though he has now a 50 food benefit. Uh, he's got 18 more mutalists coming in. Um, and I just don't see the marine count for Miko to counter that. So 34 marines versus 12 mutalists with 15 more on the way. Uh, mutalists are going to win that every time. Now these Vikings are coming down. 
maybe going to try and land and do some harass. They are. This queen is here saying, go away, go away, go away. And it is just not happening. That queen is going to go down, and all these workers are just not very happy about this. The Zergling is going to come in, probably scare off these Vikings, but he does take out two of them. That is a big fail for Miko. He is not lifting those off, and all four of those Vikings get taken out. Two more over here, doing some damage to the Overlords, but Hydra has plenty of Overlords. He's not going to be supply blocked anytime soon, and unfortunately, he's not really using these Overlords to scout. So Miko is not really denying him anything. He's not denying him the supply. He's not denying him the vision. Uh, however, neither player has control of these Zelnaga Towers, so they're both in a bit of the dark over here. Um, Nico now finally, 20 minutes, taking his third base. Uh, this is very delayed. Pygrid getting his fourth back up and running, and this is a lot of Mutalists. Now, he does have three towers here, but you see how quickly those Mutalists are taking out those towers. Nico has got to respond. He's got to pull his Marines over, and he is not doing that. He is sacrificing his third uh, I don't know if he got the cancel off on that or not, uh, and now the Marines come over and scare away these Mutalists, although to be honest, he probably has enough Mutalists to take out those Marines, uh, but he's wisely deciding that you know, if you feel ahead, the proper response is not to do something risky and go all in and try and destroy him, but the proper response is to get more ahead, because uh, it's super easy to win when you're just so far ahead. Now, that said, you know, there is a time when you just have to go freaking kill him. Uh, and I don't know if Pygrek feels that this is the time. He's going to move in again with these Mutalists. He's probably going to see these Marines, yep, and just back away, try and do some rest, try and take out that SCV, delay this expansion, but he lost a lot of Mutalists there. And now these Bane is rolling in, but they wisely back out, as those Marines have no reason to stay there. They can just stim and move away. A uh, drop coming in here on the third of Pygrek, this queen is over here, a replacement queen for the other one, and she is just as unhappy. These workers and this queen running out of here. We see a bunch of zerglings coming in, but if Nico is wise, he will just pick them up in his medevac. He only loses one marine and does a little bit of damage to the other one. Um, and that's big. Now, he didn't kill too many workers there. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, Nico's only killed 12 workers throughout this whole game. That is not a huge advantage. Uh, but he did take those drones off of mining. Now, I thought these Mutalists were going to be able to clean up that medevac and get a big win, but he must not have been watching that. Or this Viking, because he's just moving through. He's going for the kill with these guys. Now, we do see Pygrex going to try and take a fifth base, uh, but this Viking is going to spot that, if not kill the drone before it can morph. Um, he does not kill the drone, uh, and we see, gosh... As, as the people on my stream are commenting, Pygrig has 4,000 minerals. He really needs to be spending that money. You know, having a lot of money is great, and it's wonderful, but in the game of StarCraft, if you're not spending it on units, you know, your opponent doesn't care if you have 5,000 minerals if he's just killing you. It'd be much better to spend those 5,000 minerals on units that can defend you or get aggressive and attack. He is keeping his gas low. However, I don't think that's necessarily because his macro is grateful because he has no workers on these extractors. Now these Mutalists coming in, trying to take out the production buildings, that's exactly what you need to do in this mid to late game. And he is going to do a lot of damage, take out one barracks, two barracks, really get this third one, and know he's going to pull out before he takes amazing damage from this amazing amount of Marines. That is a lot of Marines. That is 71 Marines. He needs something to counter this. And those Banelings could do it if he gets a good surround with his Zerglings. I don't know if this is enough Zerglings, though. Now, we are seeing Pygreg still does have about a 30 food advantage in this um, to Miko. Uh, but, I don't know, Pygreg just hasn't been putting on the level of play uh, that he needs to. Miko, though, also, only really just now getting his third base saturated. He doesn't have a planetary fortress here, but planetary fortresses can't look up. So these Mutalists are going to come in here and be able to do some damage to the workers, do some damage to this planetary fortress, maybe take it out if they're risking, but they are not going to be risky. Oh, a little bit of a misclick there, and the Banelings just roll in and take out all of those 71 Marines and destroy those tanks, and we go GG's, and that is game. Pygreg takes the first round. Congratulations to Pygreg. Well played for Miko. Um, just could not get it uh, in the end there. 
That was a very good game. Um, so, Pygrig putting a little bit of the upset uh, as Pygrig, as I mentioned before, was only gold ranked and Miko is platinum ranked, but Pygrig played a pretty solid game. Now, he definitely uh, let his mattress slip. He had 5,000 minerals in the bank for a lot of that game, uh, but that's to be expected almost when you're a lower ranked player, when you have five bases to your opponent's three. He was just able to keep up that huge party count and just roll over uh, Mika's units, even though Mika's units were pretty superior. Now, Pygrig's going to be here uh, recording this win. Um, and I'm going to stop and then restart the stream just so I have a nice little cut of the video. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in a few minutes.